Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a 5-Minute Friday on Hunky Vape. It's September 9th, 2020, and this is your 5-Minute Friday on Hunky Vape. Our first article for today comes from Reason. Today's deadline, now this was published on September 9th. Today's deadline for seeking FDA approval of vaping products means small businesses have to pray for bureaucratic flexibility. The industry's fate depends on the whims of an agency charged with deciding what is appropriate for public health. When the FDA first outlined its plan to regulate vaping equipment and nicotine e-liquids as tobacco products in 2014, it estimated that they would receive 25 applications a year. Since the vaping industry includes thousands of manufacturers ranging from big companies like Juul to mom and pop shops that mix the e-liquids they sell, the implication was that the FDA regulation would wipe out almost all of them. We're talking a difference from thousands upon thousands of manufacturers who have to file PMTAs to what they expected of 25 applications a year. Now, these applications are enormous on purpose because this whole thing started with a backroom deal with the tobacco industry. And under the Tobacco Control Act, the FDA is supposed to approve a PMT only if appropriate for the protection of public health. Now, it's yet to be determined what that interpretation is going to actually turn into. But let's just take a look for a moment and see if this is even feasible for the FDA to accomplish. Jules PMTA, for instance, which includes the scientific data required of the application, had over 110 studies. And just the studies alone totaled 125,000 pages evaluating the product's impact on both current users of tobacco products and non-users including those who are under age. Well, the FDA is to review huge applications from vaping companies. Here's an article here in Rollout. The FDA has one year under a court order to assess the company's data and decide which devices or flavors can be legally sold. Let's figure this out. See if this is even possible, okay? Just taking a look to find a rule of thumb of how many words are on a single document, a single page. You're looking at 500 words for a single spaced document. Now, how fast can you read that document? I mean, 125,000 pages, how long would it take you to read it? Well, considering that this is actually technical material, you can only read about 50 words per minute so that you can actually comprehend what that means. Let's do some math. Here we go. Let's start off with 125,000 pages, just scientific research, part of the application. That doesn't include the rest of your actual content, like what the bottle is like, what the size is like, what the labeling is like, any of that stuff. So 125,000 pages. 500 words per page is 62,500,000 words. Now, if you read that at 50 words per minute, it would take you 1,250,000 minutes to read that one application. Now we'll look at 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours in a day, 365 days a year, non-stop, would take you 2.37 years to read that one application. That doesn't include time for you to actually verify everything that's included in that paperwork. So you would literally have to take it on the word of the applicant that the documents that you have received are legitimately the actual documents and sources and scientific data that was derived from these studies that is in your application. Is that possible? 
That's just for one application. 2.37 years. Working 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. How many people does the FDA have to process these applications that are being submitted? Well, let's just take a look here at the FDA's website. Let's see how up to date they are so far, okay? This website shows the cumulative number of pre-market tobacco applications received since the program was conceived and put into effect. Well, according to their website, which is last updated for June of this year, they've only received 650 pre-market tobacco applications. Well, September 9th was the deadline and there were still people filing their paperwork and getting it sent by overnight courier to the FDA. 650 is going to jump dramatically by the thousands. Does the FDA have thousands upon thousands of employees to process these applications within the next 12 months? It is not feasible for them to complete this application. And why did they say that you have 12 months to uh, approve these applications or deny these applications? Well, let's just take a look at it back in the day when I was in high school. Look at some numbers here to determine how many smokers are in this country. Based on the survey in 1998, an estimated 91 million adults in the United States have smoked at some point in their life. 49.4 million of them were current smokers. Okay. Let's take a look at them what it is now. According to the Centers for Disease Control, this is in 2018, nearly 14 of every 100 U.S. adults aged 18 or older, because 18 was still legal tobacco age at the time, smoked cigarettes. This means that an estimated 34.2 million adults in the United States smoked cigarettes in 2018. More than 16 million of these Americans living currently with smoking-related disease. So, the lives of all these smokers are in their hands because if these products that submitted tobacco, pre-market tobacco applications are better for you than smoking cigarettes, then they should be out on the market to help these smokers transition off of cigarettes. That's why the pressing time line is upon the FDA, and they don't have the manpower or the resources to handle the number of applications that they received. This is September 11th, a day that changed this country in ways that no one can summarize. So what was the president doing a year ago today? Well, according to this press release from the Defense Department, the Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper, and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff were hosting the president at an observance ceremony Wednesday, September 11th, 2019. Trump remembered... 9-11 in his own way. Yeah, he sure did. Because what did he do when he got done with the ceremony at the Pentagon? He went back to the White House and decided that he was going to meet with electronic cigarette industry representatives and concerned parties who want to chime in on the matter. And what was the result of this lovely meeting that they were having? So with the president's support, the Food and Drug Administration intends to finalize a guidance document that would commence enforcement to require that all flavors, other than obviously tobacco flavor, because you know, we're going to protect tobacco flavors. You get the drift. So once the FDA would finalize this guidance, we would begin enforcement actions to remove all such products from the marketplace. We would allow tobacco flavorings to remain subject to their filing of the PMTA. Any of the other products would be removed from the market 
unless they were able to submit applications and follow the regulations that were initially agreed to and set upon to cater to the big tobacco market. Who was at this meeting with the president and all the concerned members who had a vested interest in the e-cigarette market? No one other than Senator Mitt Romney had to sit alongside President Trump and spar with vaping executives at the White House meeting to face the youth addiction problem that was confronting him at the time. Okay? Mitt Romney is in bed with Big Tobacco. Mitt Romney's religious hypocrisy and lack of moral scruples are most telling exemplified by his personal involvement in Bain Capital's work for Big Tobacco, which included hooking millions of Russians on the drug that is anathema to Mormons. Anathema. Anathema to Mormons. What is anathema? Something or someone that is vehemently aberrant. A formal curse by a pope or a council of the church excommunicating a person or denouncing a doctrine. Yeah. In other words, he's going against his religious faith that he keeps touting to everybody as his guiding principle. And with Mitt Romney's leadership, Bain helped international tobacco corporations buy up Russian cigarette factories. Bain became heavily involved in escorting British American tobacco to the newly emerging market in post-Soviet Russia and helping to significantly expand the smoking habit in the Russian population. Romney knew of and approved the Let's Get Russia Smoking strategy and was the immediate boss of Bain's Russian collaborators. That strategy was successful in increasing the rate of smoking among Russians by 300%, tripling the number of Russians smoking in just a few years. The smoking rate among young Russians is now among the highest in the world and is a public health catastrophe. Uh-huh. You know, the truth eventually reveals itself. This is Trump mocking a handicapped reporter. On the day that our country changed. 19 years ago, well, 19 years ago in one day, this is what New York City looked like. Nineteen years ago, this time of day, this is what New York City looked like. And what was Trump's agenda last year? To wipe out the vaping industry. The single best way for anyone to quit smoking. This has been your 5-Minute Friday, September 11th, 2020. And I'm going to be putting together a 9-11 tribute. That I'll be posting after this video. You all have an enjoyable weekend and take a moment out of your day to remember those that we lost 19 years ago in this country.